Whew. What's up, guys? I'm going to show you what I did yesterday. 58 degrees. Feels amazing. There's the camera. There we go. Howdy. But now, I have my neighbor's house there just for his, for his safety. My corner post that I share with him is right behind that. Yeah, right there. This is an old post. That's why it looks funny. It's got rocks leaning up against it, but a brand new one where my barbed wire runs doop, this way. A brand new one's right behind it, and I got to bring it to us. And that post is 21 feet off the road, and I kind of like it. That means that I can mow the ditch and take care of it and not worry about the beefy boys getting stuck out here. And then I got to run it across the property. But what's nice is, and I'm going to do this intentionally, the AT&T pedestal and my telephone pole here, they are about 20-ish feet off the road. So when I put my fence in, I want it to be this side of the pedestal and this side of the telephone pole. That way, if utility company ever has to come out and service the utilities, they don't need to come in the yard. I don't need to open the gate. They can just do what they do. But I want to go measure and make sure that's actually 21 feet. And then I'm going to set two posts. Maybe string a little barbed wire. I don't know. So this was the old post 40 years ago and they knew, Cabela, hey, they knew 40 years ago that it was about four feet more this way. And now I'm being told it's like another four feet this way, but that's okay because if you look down the line, if I were to come over at all, you can just barely see it, but there's a pecan tree and a walnut tree that are almost five feet across down there five foot in diameter. So I don't want to mess with those. I don't want to take them out. There's no point. There's even more obstacles the further back you get. So I'm okay with the fence where it's at. And um, I'm not entirely sure it's another four feet. This is where we're going to be 21 feet off the road, which will help us avoid the whistle. So this right here is what I'm talking about working past. Like I'm wanna, I wanna make sure our fence is on this side of the telephone pole. So that way I don't have to worry about utility companies coming in. You know, you're talking about giving up five or six feet. Don't bother me none. So let's, let's measure that and see where she lands. Oh yeah, we're golden. The utility pole itself is like on the 21 foot mark, 21 feet. And I mean, those things are 12 inches around, but yeah, that'll work. So I'll just sit it inside there a little bit and run it across the front of the property. Cool, let's dig some holes. All right, I know it's like wide angle zoomed out, but this way it blocks anything in the background for privacy reasons, neighbors, that kind of stuff. So not necessarily mine, but everybody else's. And if you see any choppiness, it's because the car went by. So, all right. But I think you guys can tell what I'm talking about. This is what I mean. I don't want the utility company to have to have gate access or access to my yard in order to do anything. Now I've got utility poles further into the property. Um, however, AT&T and you know, this is the main line. That's not, if that ain't working, it's because this isn't working. So this is the one I want to make sure they have access to. And our meters on the side of the house, but just the nature of it. A lot of the companies around here do, um, 
average like estimates anyway. They're not actually reading meters. Cabela, hey, That's another reason for a fence. But measure 21 and a half feet. I'm gonna diagonal it off of this right here. I'll show you this cool trick I learned. So this is a hundred foot tape and it just, I hate these little clips. They're, they're pretty much worthless unless you're hooking onto a nail. But what I do, since I'm not worried about exacts, like I mean exacts on the nose, I just go ahead and tie off my tape to where it's at the one foot mark. So it's actually 19 and a half feet because I've already taken one foot up. It's 19 and a half feet to that pole. And I do that almost everywhere I measure and run tape. Whenever I'm setting the post, any post, big, small, whatever, especially out here, I throw rocks in the hole as the concrete's curing and mixing. Just adds a little bit better foundation to it, that kind of thing. Plus, welcome to Southwest Missouri, where we grow rocks. More rocks than anywhere. So, I throw them in the hole so I can get rid of them.
things first. This pole is crooked, not mine. Straight as an arrow, straight as a board, straight board. Sweating the bird. Better. Dug one hole, found an AT&T line. Where's my camera? Man, I'm terrible today. Dug one hole, found an AT&T line. No, I'm not gonna call Dig Right. If you don't know what Dig Right is, it's the company that comes out and says, hey, here's where your lines are, da 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 da. We're out of city limits. There's only one line. I just moved five feet in. I have no idea why that co or that, uh, I mean, it's coax wire, but I have no idea why that hard line is five feet off the pedestal. It doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Um, yeah, the post is straight. All I did was move it diagonally in the right direction. So I basically just gave up a foot. So if I'm gonna do a four board fence later or a three board, I'll still buy a 20 foot board and just lop off a little bit. So nothing to it. But plus if you're doing a 20 foot board and your posts are 20 feet apart from inside to inside, your board's gonna be a little bit short. So keep that in mind too. And I can always put a, I can always put a 10 foot, whoop, you can always put a post 10 feet in too. So one down, three to, two to go. Let me know down below, what is working roadside etiquette? I don't mean Department of Transportation guys or girls. They're busy, they gotta focus. But like, if you're up front of your property and you're working, you have to wave at everybody. I mean, this street is not a main road, but it connects two main roads, so there's a lot of traffic. Do I have to wave at everybody? Can I just wave at my neighbors? What kind of people are you? Let me know in the comments down below, just because I think it'll be interesting. Or are you the driver that if I do wave, you're pleased, even though I can't see you because you're doing 45 miles an hour, I won't be able to see if you're waving or not. Or are you the driver that watches me from a mile away before I even know you're getting here? And then I don't turn around and acknowledge you and then you're upset and it ruins your day. So let me know, just kind of curious. If somebody's working, especially digging a hole and I'm driving, but if I'm sitting in my air conditioned vehicle and you're digging a hole and you don't turn around to wave, that's fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'm not, but I, but I am. So let me know. Or are you the kind of person who speeds by for no reason whatsoever because it's a crossroad between two main roads and you make me want to grab some of these 80 pound bags of sacrete, throw them in the middle of the road in your path and hose them down. So when you hit them, if you don't slow down, you need new everything. That's what I want to do. Never use a level. And don't don't go off this pole or the uh what are those things called? Pulse pole diggers. Don't don't judge those for how straight the pole is. But whenever you're using a level, make sure it's pretty long, at least half as long as your post you're setting because <clears throat> the post can be warped. Now I chose these at Atwoods the other day, so I know they're just about as straight as they get. So, cause they're gonna be my main corner posts for these stretches. So I know they're good, but whenever you're using your level, you also, especially if you're using a fiberglass one. So I think this is a, it's neither an Empire or a Johnson, I'm not sure. But you know, when you've had a level for a while, like next summer, if I was to do any more fencing work, ain't gonna happen. Um, I would definitely wanna check this next summer because these things can warp and I don't care what, I don't care how much you pay. If it's plastic, fiberglass, what, I don't care. So there's some made out of thermo resin. I'm getting nerdy. 
There's some made out of thermal resin that may be a little bit stronger, but after I use it to line up the post, whether I do it on camera or not, I always back up and make sure it looks straight from where I'm standing. So, because it can be very deceiving. Also, on some of your posts, it kind of depends on the lay of the land, but even when I'm building privacy fences, um, you know, something other than this, when I set posts, I always put a little bit of gravel. I always put a little bit of gravel in the hole, and then I put the post down. So when moisture runs down that pole, it sits on the dirt below the gravel, like gravel, dirt, post. That way the moisture doesn't sit right below the post and rot it quicker. With the chemicals in these things, they're gonna stand there a little while, you know. Maybe not as good as an old fashioned hedge post, but it's gonna be there a while. The reason I'm not doing it on this is because I know the camera flattens everything out, but this is kind of the crest. There's a ditch right here. See the top of that T post? Probably not, but big fat knees in the way. See my mailbox? There's a ditch, and then it comes up the hill to this post. Water's not gonna sit right here in this post. I know it's a hole, but water as a general whatever is gonna flow that way. That's the creek, that's my neighbor's pond, everything. That's one of the creeks, we got two. So anyway, yeah. But that's why I'm not putting gravel in the bottom of these. Oh man, I should have put you guys on my, my new gate. I'm sorry. <laughs> that would have been a lot cooler shot. So, by the way, I'll tag these shirts down below. Um, I'm not going to read it because any algorithm picks it up and you know how that goes. But they're just some cool t-shirts. It's a small hometown business. Uh, the guy's out of Ohio. His name's Jake. I think he's awesome. I bought his shirts way before I knew his name. And uh, doesn't sponsor the channel or anything like that, but I'll put a link down below if you guys want them. It's red, white, and blue apparel. But he's a good guy. He's got an Instagram. You can shop right through Instagram. That's the easiest way to do it. Let's see. I was going to tell you something about those posts. Oh, yeah. If you use those posts. These posts are eight feet tall. And I'll show you. I just stood by it real quick. They're eight feet tall, and I'm 6'3", 6'4", if my little bigger brother's watching. But uh, they're in the ground at least two feet because none of them are exactly eight foot uh, when they roll out of the machine. But it ain't going anywhere. I'm really not even worried about a cross brace. Um, I'll probably put one up just for, might even put one up just for aesthetics, like a support beam, right? And because I'm going to pull that way and this way uh, when I stretch barbed wire across there. So anyway, but with a bag and a half of concrete, 80 pound concrete, I wedge rocks all the way around it. 
I also don't dig a two foot hole. Now on this side, I had to dig a little bit bigger hole because I hit a massive rock about halfway down and it was like half covering my hole. So I had to move it a little bit, about a six to eight inches the other way. So that, that hole's a little bit bigger, but if you saw what I did, the neighbors are strange, stranger than me. What I did was I put a giant rock on top of the other giant rock to basically make, when I, I had a rock here, I, I dug a hole and I hit a rock. So I just moved my hole a little bit this way, dug down, got the depth I wanted, and then I stacked another rock on top of that huge, there's a rock, dug a hole and I hit a rock. So I adjusted where I was gonna dig the depth of my hole and I dug down the depth I needed, and then I stacked another rock on top of this one. I can't do it without looking at my hands. I stacked another rock on top of this one so that the hole and the pole and everything were straight and had something to go up against so it wasn't like a you know, two foot wide hole. But over here, and this is what you always wanna do, when you're setting a post, that post shouldn't be too much, the hole shouldn't be too much bigger than the post, okay? If it's got a lot of wiggle room left to right, that pole's gonna shift a lot, don't do that. No more posts today. Posts are dug. Posts are set. I dug the holes and I set the posts. They didn't Post the dug, dig the posts. No peeking. I'm gonna change it up on you here entirely. I'm not gonna let you see too much of the house because we're still doing things. I don't want you to know. This is not a new addition. It gets even better, hang on. Also, not a new addition. Fly strap included. The fan makes a horrible noise when it's spinning, but we need the light. So we put a fly strap in the fan. So when we turn it on, the fly trap sticks to the fan and the fan stops and doesn't make a horrible noise. What are those? I don't know if the little, the white chest, I don't know what it is yet. She said it may be too young to have a crest, but I think they're all pretty much the same age. Mm In case you guys haven't noticed, my dad's been posting videos that are about 30 minutes long. And since I'm the final say on what gets posted, because we got so much going on around the farm, I've told them we need to break up the projects in the videos. So dad let me watch the first half of this video, and I figured that was enough projects for one day. So let's go ahead and wrap this one up. But until next time, deuces. Chicken deuces. Oh! Deuces. <laughs> What's your beef? <laughs>